Welcome to episode 4 of Scottish Digest, where we will be telling you all about Campbelltown. In today's episode, we will hear from Scottish crime fiction writer Denzel Myrick about its favourite places to eat in Kintyre, as well as hear from Ian, who will tell us all about the Mull of Kintyre Music Festival, which takes place every year in Campbelltown, and in 2023 it will be taking place from Wednesday the 9th to Sunday the 13th of August. Ian will also tell us more about the Kintyre Route 66, which is a guide to not only what is happening in Campbelltown, but wider Kintyre, as well as tell us about his favourite places to visit, eat and stay in Campbelltown. But we'll get to that. Let me first tell you a wee bit about Campbelltown and where it is. Campbelltown, according to Wikipedia, is located on the Kintyre Peninsula, lies by Campbelltown Loch and is the westernmost town in the island of Great Britain. As the crow flies, it is a mere 60 miles or 96 kilometres west of Glasgow. However, due to the fact you have to travel over hills and around lochs, the journey by car, despite being beautiful, will take you about three hours. You can, of course, travel to Campbelltown via Caledonian McBrain Ferry as well as fly. In 2018, there was an estimated population of 4,600, making Campbelltown, according to VisitScotland.com, one of the largest towns in Argyll. If you enjoy your whisky, then you'll be pleased to know there are three active distilleries in Campbelltown, and Campbelltown is one of five areas in Scotland that is categorised as being a distinct malt whisky producing region. However, according to wildaboutargyle.co.uk, there used to be more than 30 distilleries at one point, and Campbelltown was once known as the whisky capital of the world. As well as being known for whisky distilling, Campbelltown used to also be a busy fishing port, and there is an exhibit at the Campbelltown Heritage Centre located on Big Kiln Street which shows the different types of fishing vessels that operated from the harbour. There are also a wide range of other exhibits and collections to see at the Heritage Centre, such as coal mining, farming, fishing and shipbuilding, with some of the objects dating back from around 1700 up to the present day. Now we're going to hear a bit more about the Kintyre Route 66 from Ian, but if you enjoy walking, taking in this route is a must, along which you'll come across ruined castles, beautiful beaches and some amazing food stops. Kintyre 66 is a new route which was launched by Explore Kintyre and Gear two years ago. It's got a map and an itinerary planner, so if you want to come along to Kintyre, there's six different areas that you can visit in Kintyre. Six ferries come to the area, there's six islands off the area, and, uh, you know, come for three days, six days. You can go visit Skipness, Tarbert, you can visit Gia, Campbelltown, South End, Macrahanish, East Kintyre, West Kintyre. The itinerary planner tells you all places you can visit. We've actually got an Anthony Gormley sculpture, well, only one in Scotland, and it's up at Saddle, where the uh, Mall of Kintyre video, music video, was created by Paul McCartney. There's lots of wee quirky things of interest in Kintyre. Um, it lists all the events and festivals, because there's lots of other events and festivals, lots of sporting events on in Kintyre as well. And it gives you an overall view and what all you can do, and places you can stay when you're here, places you can eat when you're here. And if you go to explorekintyre.com, you can download the, the map and itinerary planner there, and then take your time, just dawdle around the route. You've got a motorhome, you can go to the local uh, hire companies and they will hire out a car for you if you've got a motorhome as well. Because one of the roads is a B road, so you've got to be very careful when you're driving around that with a motorhome. For accommodation, if you go to explorekintyre.com, that's got lots of accommodation places to stay. One other thing to mention about Campbelltown is its distinctive and sheltered harbour. We're going to hear from Scottish author Denzel Myrick in this episode where he will tell you some of his recommendations about Campbelltown, as not only is this where Denzel is from, but the distinctive harbour features heavily in his DCI daily books. And if you're a fan of Denzel's books, or if you've listened to the interview I did with Denzel recently on my other podcast, Scottish Murders, you will know that his DCI daily books are going to be made into a major television series starring Rory McCann from Game of Thrones. And the series will be filmed in Campbelltown and will, of course, feature the very distinctive harbour. 
so it's definitely worth visiting the harbour at Campbelltown, which, according to CampbelltownHeritageCentre.co.uk, was essential to many industries, from whisky to wind turbines, as well as being a key element in the naval defences during the First and Second World Wars. Campbelltown is uh, on the Kintyre Peninsula. It used to be a much bigger town than it is now. During the Second World War, there was about 20,000, 30,000 people in Campbelltown because of the, the naval base then and um, the ships in Campbelltown Law, which were it was a major port during the Second World War. Nowadays, it's um, very much centred around farming and um, the whisky distilleries are making a, a new... Um, there's whisky distilleries being being built there as we speak and Springbank and Glen Scotia are fine, fine whiskies that, that have won awards around the world. Um, the town itself is bustling and really interesting with a great history, uh, friendly people, lots of places to go, lots of people, lots of places to eat and have a drink and enjoy yourself in good hotels. And I thoroughly recommend it to anybody. Do you have a favourite place you eat at when you go there? Number 42 is very good. It's in the main street. It's owned by a friend of mine, so it's very nice. I love South End, which is right down the bottom of the peninsula, a village right down the end. And Francis at Muneroid has wonderful cakes and teas and things like that. So I, 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 I commend her to you. If you're in Kintyre at all, go to Number 42 Restaurant or the Archie Hotel, which is a great stock of whiskey, or Muneroid down at South End, which, you know, if there's a better cake maker in the world than Francis, I'll... I've yet to meet her. Now, while we're going to hear about the Mull of Kintyre Music Festival in today's episode, there are many other events that take place in Campbelltown throughout the year, such as the Campbelltown Malts Festival, which usually takes place for four days in late May. At this festival, you can expect such things as tasting and live music and talks. Another festival that takes place every year is the Mull of Kintyre Music Festival. Here's Ian, one of the organisers of the festival, to tell you all about it. Mull of Kintyre Music Festival is held in Campbelltown in Kintyre, in the west coast of Scotland. This year's dates are August 9th to the 13th. It's a five-day event, although we do have lots of other things going on around about it. The week in the run-up to the event, we have heritage trail walks around Campbelltown. We've got distillery tours from the uh, Glen Scotia, Kilcairn and the Benenturk Gin Distillery. On the Wednesday, the 9th, first thing is a children's show. It's the McDougall's, which is held in the Town Hall in Campbelltown. The first concert for the music festival is on Wednesday the 9th. It's the Benenturk Festival Gaelic Night, and that is held in the Gail Arms Hotel in Campbelltown. The headline act for this is Kathleen McInnes and Mike, with Mike Vass. And uh, this is actually quite a rare chance to catch Kathleen. She doesn't play that many live events. It's a good old-fashioned Gaelic night with lots of stories, various different artists and musicians from around Campbelltown and Argyle going up beforehand and then we finish it all off with Kathleen's performance. Uh, that's £12 a ticket for that concert. It starts at 7 o'clock. The Thursday night is the Young Folk Night. Now that's the 10th and that's held in Campbelltown Heritage Centre. Now that's a concert which celebrates the, sort of, the young musicians around Kintyre. A very popular night with families but it's great for visitors as well as it's got lots. You can get a good chance to sort of see some of the young and up-and-coming um, musicians and singers that are coming through. We've got pipe bands on it. We've got blast bands on it. We've got Highland dancers on it. So it's a very good mix of things. And that's £8 a ticket. And it starts at 7 o'clock as well. On the Friday night, we have the Katire Schools Pipe Band do a performance at the head of the Old Quay. That's at half past seven. They then march into the Victoria Hall for the first of the concerts in the big hall. Now, the Victoria Hall is uh, right beside the, the roundabout, and basically that's where the main concerts are held. This is the Festival Cayley Night, and it's a big, big family event. We get people of all ages and stages go to it. It starts off with the pipe band playing on the on the floor, um, and it's uh, quite a thing to see, actually. That's followed by the Dal Reda Connections Band. This is a band which is comprised of students and tutors from Camelton Grammar School and interspersed with musicians from across the Gael and Northern Ireland, who come on stage. I think the biggest band we've ever had was a 27-piece band, which is a bit of a nightmare for the sound crew, but it was um, it was a great sound, and it's a great start to the, the concert, concert on the stage. Next, we have the We Tune Tellers, which are a local band who have been about for about 30, 40 years. Great band with lots of songs and tunes, and quite a bit of crack with the audience at that one. And then we're into the, the Cayley Band, which is the Scarra Cayley Band. This is their first time in Campbelltown. 
a really good Kelly dance band. And the whole night is like a, an old fashioned Kelly where everyone goes up and Kelly dances. Tables and chairs at this event, but a huge big dance floor. Tickets for this concert are £18 for an adult and it's £9 if it's for under, if you're under 12. So it's to try and encourage the whole families to come along to this event. That starts at 7.30. The doors are at 7.30 for that event. On the Saturday, the 12th, we start off the Festival Parade. That kicks off around 12.30 at the Esplanade. That's led by the Katire School's Pipe Band. They march through the streets of Campbelltown and they're followed by floats with local businesses on it, community groups on it. We've got children's entertainers walking on it, walking groups. It's a very colourful event. That goes right, right round the town, finishes at Kinloch Green, where the pipe band then march on to open up the afternoon event, which is Doon the Green, that's what we call it. That's a huge, big community event with lots of community stalls. It's got a live bands on the stage. It's got Highland dancers. We've got Taekwondo exhibition on it. We've got children's entertainment. The fair's right beside it as well, so it's great for the adults because the children can go across to the fair and the adults can sit and enjoy the afternoon. Got a big bar area and a next nice big area, big children's field as well. So it's an all-round family event. That, that's free to go to. Of course, donations welcome, but that's it's a nice big way of for the whole community to come together. The first of the evening concerts is the traditional concert, which is held in Camelton Heritage Centre. It's the second concert in this event, and this year it's headlining with the Fiona Hunter Trio, and we have an opening act is the, the Gail Cayley Trio, which are, who are doing two performances that night on Saturday night. The first one is an acoustic set, and the second one will be in the next concert, which I'll tell you about shortly. Tickets for this concert are £15, and this concert starts at 7 o'clock. Doors are at 6.30. This concert normally finishes around about 9, and that's when the West Coast Rocks concert starts. This is the Glen Scotia West Coast Rocks concert, and this is the second concert in the Victoria Hall. Um, this is like a three bands all playing good festival sets, headlining with Skippinish, who are one of the main attractions in Scotland at the moment. Uh, we also have Keel on R, a band from Oban, a five-piece band from Oban. Opening will be the Kataya Kayla Tale doing the second performance, and this is a good festival Kayla set they're going to do. This is a big lively event. There's some tables and chairs, not all seated by any means. A huge big dance floor, a very popular. Tickets for this concert are £28. And uh, just to point out, tickets are going very fast for concerts, so if you want to go to events, don't waste too much time before getting them, if you want to guarantee you want to go. The next event is, on the Sunday, we have the Dalrada Connections concert. Now, this is actually a, an event which has been going now for about 15 years. It's to celebrate the, the links between Northern Ireland and, and Kintyre, and the ancient kingdom of Dalriada, which basically, we've got the strapline for the music festival, the cradle of the nation. And basically, if you go back in history, the Scots went to Ireland for the Ice Age. They then came back and they landed in Kintyre because it, it defrosted first. Waited there for a few hundred years. Moved north. Caused all sorts of wars and all that sort of stuff. So we say it was cradle of the nation because we have a footstep at South End, which is called the Fealty Footstep, where the first kings of Scotland were crowned. So the Dalriada Connections concert is a celebration of the, the links. We've got a double headline for this. We've got Mary Campbell coming through and she's going to do uh, the, the opening set. And then we have a, a duo, which is Archie McAllister and Sheila Sinclair, who are doing a fiddling piano set. And, uh, well, various other artists from across the Gyle, from Northern Ireland, all playing. And we all finish up with the Dara the Connections Band again. This is a collection of all the artists, the musicians who play during the whole, the, the whole Saturday, Sunday afternoon, and they all finish it all off. Bonus for this one is you also get a Kilcairn, a Kilcairn distillery miniature to take away with you. The tickets for this concert are £14. Doors at one thirty starts at 2, finishes around about 5 o'clock. You get a short break, and then at 7.30, the doors to the, the Victoria Hall open for the last concert. This is the Kilcairn Survivors Night. This is a great event. Sells out in no time at all. A few tickets left for this concert at the moment. And what we have at this is, we headline with what we've got a band called Slanji Debar All-Stars. It's a mixture of all the sort of musicians from, it's got a core group of musicians from Campbelltown, and they're joined by various different musicians from around the area each year. They did 22 new new tracks every year, tracks from the 60s, 70s, 80s, right through noughties to the noughties, and you'll hear everyone from Tina Turner to, you know, right to the chic. You can hear anything. We also then have the entire school's pipe band. They're going to play it on the stage, and they actually hook up with lots of other musicians, so they've got a full drum kit behind them, and it's something special when they when they play it. It's their first performance at the, the, the Kilcairn Survivors Night for seven years, so we're really looking forward to that. Before that, we have a band called We Are Soul. What to watch how I say that. And this is a band of musicians who play a sort of 
swing. They do they do a bit of funk. They've got a brass section with it as well. It's a, just I love the big band, a twelve piece band. So you get a bit of brass, a bit of funk. So it's a great it's a great band. Tickets for this course are twenty two pound. This course starts at seven thirty. Door seven thirty starts at eight o'clock. Runs on till between one o'clock two o'clock. It's a big long concert. It's a great night out. Most of the concerts are licensed. The ones in the Heritage Centre are not. The rest are all licensed. There's lots of fringe events around the event as well. There's lots of stuff in the pubs and the bars and the hotels. Social clubs, they've all got live, live music on. The open air events are across the town. So you can just pick and choose. You can go to a free event. You can go to a concert. The t- concerts are all ticketed individually. Basically because very few people can actually manage to go to certain concerts. But it's only about £115 to go to every single concert. But you can pick and choose which concerts you want to go to, which venues you like. We get people coming from all over the world to this event. I've just had a quick check with a uh, ticket web. And this year we've got people from across Europe, Sweden, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, Finland, Norway, France. We've got the USA, lots of people from USA come across Canada, South America. We've got ones coming across from China this year. So it's quite a global event. One of the reasons we started the event was actually Campbelltown in the early 90s. It wasn't really doing that well. It wasn't a lot of tourists. We started the event up actually to help extend the tourist season. So it was always usually held at the second last Saturday of August, or a week earlier this year because of the Pipe Band Championships. But basically, um, the festival was started just to sort of get people to come to the area and say extend the tourist season. It's now the busiest weekend in the whole of the entire. It's very difficult to get beds. So what we've done is we've worked in with Makrahani's Holiday Park. So you can come along with camper vans, you can camp. So it's different ways of coming, coming to the festival, different types of accommodation at the festival. If you're coming, make sure you book early. And as I say, it's a, it's lots of stuff across the whole event, from children's entertainment to big live concerts. The Saturday night in particular is like a big like a festival within a festival. That's the way we look at it. But we've also got workshops at the event as well. We've got tours around the harbour on the Saturday morning. So all in all, it's a, a fun event to come along to. And you can pick and choose what you want to go to. You can find out more at the Music Festival website, which is www.mockfest.com. That's M-O-K-F-E-S-T dot com. You can buy tickets directly from it. Or you can email me, I'm Ian Johnston at mockfest at hotmail.co.uk. And if you visit our Facebook page, which is the Music Festival, there's lots of individual posters about each course that tell you, tell you much more about the event. And we're really looking forward to it and we'd love for you to come along to it. I absolutely love the sound of the Mull of Kintyre Music Festival. If you've been to a previous festival or are planning on going to this one, please let us know what you enjoyed about it the most. Like Ian said, if you plan to go this year from the 9th to the 13th of August 2023 and want to attend a concert, then get your tickets now while they're still available by visiting mokfest.com. You can find out more about the Kintyre Route 66 by visiting wildaboutargyle.co.uk and searching for Kintyre Route 66. Now, I've one final thing to tell you about Campbelltown. In the heart of Campbelltown, there is a beautiful, peaceful wee garden, which is called Linda's Memorial Garden, after Sir Paul McCartney's late wife, Linda. According to atlasobscura.com, upon Sir Paul and Linda getting married in 1969, they lived in a farmhouse about an 11-minute drive outside of Campbelltown, and the couple were very fond of Kintyre and felt so at home there, with Linda's ashes actually being scattered across the Kintyre area. The Campbelltown residents were also very fond of Linda and Sir Paul, and so as a tribute to Linda, the Lady Linda McCartney Memorial Garden was created, with Sir Paul, according to lindasgarden.co.uk, generously donating a bronze sculpture as the centrepiece for the garden. The garden is a quiet haven for rest and contemplation, and is located on Shore Street near the Campbelltown Museum. And that's the end. A big thank you to Ian for telling us all about the Mull of Kintyre Music Festival and Kintyre Route 66, which you can find more about from mokfest.com and wildaboutargyle.co.uk. And also a big thank you to Denzel Myrick for giving his personal Kintyre food recommendations. If you'd like to find out more about Denzel or his books, you can visit denzelmyrick.com. All links will be in the show notes or under this episode at clurenton.com slash Scottish Digest. That's C-L-U-A-R-A-N-T-O-N-N dot com slash Scottish Digest. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Join us next time for another wee slice of Bonnie Scotland.
Scottish Digest is a production of Clurin Torn.